Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, Emmanuel and Lakia. Yes. Lakia, Emmanuel and Lakia. We are very thankful to God that you are here with us in the church. Let's greet the children. Children, goodbye. So Alexander is their uh, religious teacher today. And Alexander will pray for you for patience and wisdom. And, uh, and what is amazing about Emmanuel and Lakia, they are the neighbors of the one lady who was coming here. Uh, and her father is uh, Darko Velichkovsky. Uh, the, you remember, Yelena remember Darko and Anne Velichkovsky. And the, what was the name of the daughter? Lydia, Lydia Velichkovsky. And uh, when I saw on the Facebook, I said, how do you know these people? She said, they're my neighbors. Emmanuel teach me how to play piano. And it's amazing how the, the world is small or the Serbia is big, <laughs> or, uh, but anyway, we are very thankful that we are here, and we, um, uh, as a community, we just want to uh, learn from uh, about God, we want to learn how we can uh, uh, be a true Christian during the week, and uh, that's a challenge sometimes in society that we are serving, and we are very happy that, uh, that we see Brother Roger with us here, and he is back, welcome back, Roger. Thank and uh, we have uh, one sister here from Switzerland, and I would like to ask her to come here. She will be here for uh, at least for three months with us. Or maybe you can stand up and just greet people. This is Christina from Switzerland. <laughs> Christina has an amazing story. Maybe one of the Sundays we can interview her, uh, because I, she just arrived yesterday. It will be not fair that I now interview her without notice. We, the Swiss people like to plan in advance, <laughs> but here in Balkans we are different, yeah, uh, we, we like to use the word flexible, we are flexible, and uh, 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 spirit-led. <laughs> okay, uh, Christina is here, Christina has a special work, and she will help us here, she was, she's helping in uh, Switzerland the people, uh, ladies, who are uh, in the human trafficking uh, Pro problem and uh, and she's sharing the gospel and talking with the prostitutes there in Lucerne and other places and she will be here with us uh, three months and more maybe and we will connect her with a few organizations who are doing that but it's a very interesting story and you can uh, you can talk with her after the service uh, also uh, we mentioned uh, Tiana mentioned some needs like if you have some clothes if you have some food if you want to help some people who are in need Please talk to Tiana after the service and, and tell her, I want to donate clothes, I want to give money for, that we can uh, build a package. We have about 10 families that we are uh, giving them food uh, on a regular basis and one, uh, one package costs about uh, 40 euros. And we want to provide, especially for November and December and for January, for the people who don't have food that we can uh, bless them. Uh, and, and serve our community like that. That's very important. Also, some young people are searching for jobs here. Uh, Alexander, can you raise your hand? This is Alexander. Alexander is a student of archaeology. You can sit down and he's searching for job. He speaks German. Uh, also, he's very good in organization. If you have opportunity to, to connect with some people to get a job, please approach to Alexander because he wants to get some job before uh, he finished uh, the university. And he's good. good with Greek too. He's good with Greek also, and he knows a little bit Latin, old Latin, but I don't know if anybody's using that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> something you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, if, if you want to immigrate uh, to Germany, he can prepare you for the German <laughs> like a language. But we are very happy you are here. We are studying Bible, uh, we are going through the First Peter. Uh, First Peter is an is amazing letter. Peter was the main, uh, uh, one of the main apostles of Jesus, and Peter was an apostle of hope. We usually say John, uh, uh, John is an apostle of love, uh, Peter, uh, Paul is an apostle of faith, Peter is an apostle of hope. And today, we need hope like people 2,000 years ago. Especially today where people are thinking about their future, about their health, a lot of people are dying. Today, this world around us needs hope, and we have hope in Jesus Christ, and we need to be a people of hope. Amen? Amen. And I think that's very important that we can uh, reflect God's hope in every life, in everyday life, that we can encourage people.
to uh, to uh, to be hopeful and to to ask us where we find the source of that hope. In, in this letter, chapter three, fifteen, Peter said, "Be fast to answer." Uh, what is the reason, answer to others, what is the reason of the hope that they see in you? Uh, and this is the people who were going through the persecution and the problems. And today, maybe you go through persecution and problems. May God help you that you can find hope and that people around yourself can see that hope, that you can point them to Christ. We will have a sermon now. We will read the text. We will go in the same text what uh, Jake was preaching uh, uh, last uh, Sunday. And then uh, I would like to emphasize what are the six metaphors that, uh, that uh, uh, Peter illustrates who we are. Because I think in the times of crisis, we need a hope. In the times of crisis, we need to live a ho holy life. But also in the times of crisis, we need to know who we are. The question of our identity is very important. Who you are. Because sometimes we identify with our jobs. And when we lose the job, then we are in a panic. A lot of people even kill themselves because when they lose the job that they identify very close, they don't see the future and hope for them. And I think that in this chapter, we have a lot of, lot of uh, uh, interesting illustrations that I want to mention. It's a six, of, six illustrations that Peter is using, which is straightening our Christian identity. And I will ask uh, Sister Alexa if she can come and read if you open your Bibles or turn on your phones, if you have a Bible in your phone, we will read in First uh, uh, Peter from two from verse one, chapter two. First Peter chapter two, one to seventeen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind, like newborn babies. Crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in, trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, this stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor or as the supreme authority, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to command those who do right, commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. Amen. Thank you, Alexa. Uh, before we go in text, I forgot the teenagers. Uh, Tori is doing a class with the teenagers. Go, uh, please, there if you're a teenager. <laughs> that means between 12 and uh, 7, 18 years old. If you're a teenager, be, please be free to go for the class there. That's good. Four teenagers coming there. And where is Sadie? Okay, uh, Sadie, can you stand up, please? Sadie is leading a prayer meeting uh, for the church. And if you have any prayer, uh, prayer requests, please give to her. And after the service, we want to pray for you and pray with you. I think this is very, very important. Okay. Uh, 
Peter is starting this section, he's using the word therefore. Therefore, uh, because the last verse in the chapter 1, he's mentioning the word of God. He said, the all men are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field, the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. He, he just wants to tell them the, the word of God is very important. That's the reason why we are reading Bible. Bible is the word of God. Bible is not a, just a, the book that we need to be fascinating about details. There is a lot of details. But Bible is uh, informing us and speaking to us who is God, who are we, what is the problem in, in life, and how we can come close to God. And I think this is a very important book. And many people lost their lives in the history of the church because of this book. Please read the Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we would like to give you a Bible as a gift. We have a few Bibles in English. But uh, it's, reading the Bible is very important for our spiritual development. Amen? Amen. Uh, and the first thing that he's mentioning them here is, uh, he said like, uh, therefore, re get rid, rid yourselves of the old malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Another translation, get rid of uh, gossip. Gossip. In, in, in Serbia, we don't gossip at all. <laughs> we don't have this problem. This is only for 2,000 years. But all of this, uh, uh, this is the bad things of the character he's uh, mentioning to Christian people, which is very interesting. Sometimes, as we Christian people, we have a problem with uh, hypocrisy. We are envy. Sometimes we like to gossip around, don't talk to people directly. And uh, this is the bad habits of the old nature that we used to have. If we believe in Jesus, then we have a new nature. And this uh, uh, Peter and other writers, Paul, they're mentioning that. And then he, as an as a antidote toward, the, toward these problems, he's mentioning something which is first our identity. He said in verse 2, like a newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, know that you have tasted the Lord is good. The first thing, your identity, you are born, you are a newborn person. When you believe in Jesus, when you trust in Jesus, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We get rebellions against God. We didn't want His direction and His will. He, we went in a different different uh, direction and we lost the life communication we became spiritually dead apostle paul mentioned that in ephesians 2 but that's the reason why god in love he sent his son jesus christ to die on the cross for our sins all religions are talking about what i need to achieve and do to come close to god and god's standards are very high in biblical christianity what jesus is offering us is that he came to us god came to us he became one of us when you have a small child, you need to come on, 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 the, on the child level to explain all of the details about life. God loves you so much that He came on this earth like Jesus to show you love and respect and that you can, uh, that, that, that He paid the price for our sins, that whenever we repent and say, Lord, forgive me, and I trust in, you, in what you did through the grace of Jesus Christ, then you, uh, through the faith, you became justified. Jesus took your sins and He gave you His righteousness. He gave you a new nature. And then you became a new person. Uh, that's the reason why He's mentioning here, He said, you're born through the Word of God. Uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. We are born babies, uh, uh, but still we are still immature, vulnerable, needs to grow, and we need to get rid of these bad habits that I just read a few seconds ago. And the way how you can get a spiritual appetite it's that you can search for pure spiritual milk. Like babies are growing and getting healthy from mother's milk, daily discipline feeding is a secret of healthy spiritual growth. You know, like how is important mother's milk for a baby, <laughs> yeah? And a lot of, uh, for, the, for the grow. And basically what Peter wants to, to say here, the Word of God, Bible, is that milk that we have tasted that God is good and you taste it and now we need to get thirsty every day that we can take that spiritual milk that we can take this word of God for our maturity and for our strong spiritual immune system there is a great need for daily discipline in the Christian life 
to read Bible, to study the Word of God, and to pray to God that God will give us strength that we can put that into practice in our daily life. The similar thought uh, writer in Hebrews, he said, you need to eat not only milk, but uh, strong food. <laughs> strong food, Hebrews 5, you can read that from 11 to 14. And basically, when you became a Christian, when you became a newborn person, you need to feed yourself. You need to grow spiritually. You need to be mature. Uh, it's not only enough to do to come on Sunday services, that's important, but every day you need to take a, a spoon and to eat. I usually said, if you're only coming on the Sunday morning service uh, and not feed yourself during the week, you're like uh, on infusion. <laughs> you, you get uh, infusion, you're still alive, but you don't have too much energy to live this kind of life, which means this is very important to take that seriously, to study Bible every day, to think, to pray, and to get that spiritual milk for your life. And the babies, babies needs to grow. And, the, and the Jesus said, blessed are those who are thirsty and hungry for righteousness. Jesus said, blessed are those who are poor in the spirit, which means daily, we every day need spiritual direction. We every day need spiritual strength and power. And our faith needs, in God needs to be developed because there is a lot of temptation during the week. A lot of stressful situations. Especially you, if you have a big family, kids, problems. All, every day we have a lot of situations where our immune system needs to be, spiritual immune system needs to be strong. Today a lot of people are talking about our immune system, take vitamin C, zinc, D, uh, D <laughs> etc. And, uh, and, and our spiritual immune system needs to be strong because when the virus comes, when temptation comes, it's coming out from us. It's, running away from us. That's the reason why this is very, very important. And also he's mentioning here uh, a very interesting thing that he said you need to grow, you need to take the milk that you can spiritually grow. And I think this is very important for everybody who believes in Jesus and everybody who believes in God. We need to, to see in our lives spiritual growth. There must be some fruits, in spiritual fruits in our lives because otherwise we, if we are just standing and we are not uh, taking the spiritual milk, we are missing a lot of things, a lot of things in life. And I think this is uh, very important what Paul tell to Timothy. He said, uh, do these things that your growth will be visible to others. And I think when we taking this seriously, that uh, in times of crisis, we need to be like us babies who are feeding ourselves with spiritual milk, with the word of God. We need to read, we need to study. We need to think about that. And God will use this in, in a special power of the Holy Spirit that you can become a mature Christian. Amen? And I know during the day, the day is chaotic. When you wake up to Monday morning, especially we, you who have a kids, who, which uh, kids are going, what school, what you're doing, and you're very busy. And you have a lot of things on your agenda, especially some of you who are in a business, running corporations, and some of you working in embassies, some of you are also students, some of you are in different areas of life, and life is, can be very busy, yes? But you need to set this as priority, to have a discipline, 10 minutes, 15 minutes per day, to, to stop everything, to turn off the phone, and to study the Word of God, to study, to read, and to get some vitamins from this amazing spiritual milk. Amen? Let's make this decision this morning. Let's say, I want God to help me, that I can be a person of discipline, that I can put that in my schedule. Some of you are morning person, some of you are evening person. It's important how that you can do it. You, you, you're supposed to be, because God is speaking to us through His Word. God is giving us direction on a, on a crossroads when we need to make some decisions. God is speaking us through this alive, good Word of God. Amen? Amen? Okay, first, identity. You are babies that needs to grow. <laughs> we as a Christians, we need to grow. Second thing, uh, Christianity is not, uh, is not like a lonely religion. You know, like sometimes people said, oh, I, 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 you know, like uh, especially in, in this culture, like, oh, faith is not my private thing. I will just do by myself, home, etc. No, God created the church. And we are part of the living temple, not church as a building and institution, church is people, 
people who believe in Jesus, people who get, got transformed and they became a born again. The second image here is that uh, Peter is mentioning here. He said, "You are living stone. You are living stone." Uh, in a, in a chapter, in a verse four and five, he said, "As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into the spiritual house." He basically said, because you came to Christ, you start to believe in Him. He is the main person of, of He's the main stone that people rejected, unfortunately. But we are coming close to Him in faith. Then we became alive people. We became a living stones. And I was uh, last week in Philippi. Christian, do you have this picture in Philippi? I saw some of the. I was very close to the prison when uh, Paul and Sila was there. And this is the prison in Philippe, next to Kavala. If you go in Greece, you must go there, Alexander. And this is, a, do you have a second? Uh, yeah, this is one of the building. And every stone is different. Yes? Every stone is different. And in, in, in those times, they build houses like this. Basically, what Peter wants to say, all of us, we are different, but we are together in one building. And foundation is Christ. And of course, sometimes... Uh, uh, some of us are a little bit like you have two extra on some edge and then the main mason God is needs to work on us to put us into this into this building. Uh, what is very interesting is that every stone is carrying other stones. The church, the fellowship is here that we worship God but also we need to take care of each other. Paul is speaking to us and saying, Take, take care of the burdens of each other. When one part of the body is painful or sick, the whole body is suffering. Peter, from the, it's very interesting, from the world of biology, is going to the world of architecture, <laughs> talking about stone and building, and church is a building under construction. Living stores are believers. God is building his church until this building is not finished. Christ is the living stone on which we build our lives, not the Peter. That's, uh, Peter wanted to say, it's not me that you should build the church on me. <laughs> it's Jesus. Jesus is the key. And Jesus is the, the living, uh, the, the, the main cornerstone. As babies need to grow, stones need mortar to stick to other stones in the building. We belong to one another and we need to carry each other's. Wonderful picture of the church and fellowship. Each stone is carrying others. There is no stones in the mid-air alone. And when you see the, this building, you don't see, oh, you see the third uh, stone on the left side. No, you see the beautiful building. And each of us, we are different. From different cultures. From different backgrounds. But together, we are a Christ church. Amen? Uh, sometimes when you walk around Belgrade and then you you're walking around some buildings and they're doing some construction and then you see a lot of paint, sand there. You see, what is this? Looks very ugly. But when they finish the building, you say, wow, it's a beautiful building. You know, like, and, 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 and that's, the, that's the church. Maybe sometimes today in a church you see a lot of paint there, a lot of sand. It doesn't look, you know, but God is working. We are all under the construction and God is putting us in, a, in that building. We need to Recapture the vision of the church as a living stones in the building of God. And, uh, and, uh, and the, the quality of the mortar is duty of love and support for each other. We need to love each other and support each other, to take care of each other. And that's the beauty of the church. Jesus said, how people will know that you are my disciples? If you love each other as I love you. He didn't say if you have big buildings or nice services. No, if love for each other and we really sometimes we are busy thinking about our lives but we need to maybe I want to be responsible living stone during the week I want to ask other people what is their needs I want to serve to each other I, we, we need to make a phone calls to, to take care of each other also Apostle uh, uh, Peter he's also uh, Paul is mentioning in Ephesians 2 19 and 22 that the Jesus is their cornerstone. stone that the uh, that everything, the whole building in the church is building up on that corner, corner stone. If we are living stones, and I think this is very important. There is a nice quotation of John uh, Stott, uh, uh, 
uh, about uh, uh, Christianity. He said, like Christianity, with a can you? Okay, uh, it's a nice uh, Christianity without Christ is the frame without picture. Uh, Casket without jewel. And <laughs> body without breath. <laughs> body without breath. Christianity without Christ is nothing. Christ is the cornerstone. Uh, and everything, all what apostles speak and everything is above. Uh, we're building up on that. Okay, the, the second image. You need to be like a baby to spiritually, individu individualistically to grow. Uh, it's uh, our personal individual responsibility. We, are, we also have a corporate responsibility. We are part of the church. We need to be a living stone. Church is a living body, not institution who are just thinking about history, but to, we need to be living stone that we can support each other. The third image is priests. In, 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 chapter, in verse 5, he said, be, to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Holy priest, and they had a duty in Old Testament, and the priests worship God. Usually when you say priest, it's like, oh, they worship God. In Old Testament, they have two privileges. They enjoy access to God. Only them could enter the temple in a holy place, and high priest once a year of their of atonement. Others were excluded, and law prescribes death penalty to break this rule. And also, second, their uh, privilege was they enjoy offering of sacrifices to God. Ordinary people just brought animals, put hands on them symbolically, and the priest killed that animals and did a rit ritual and sprinkled to blood for forgiveness of sins. That was like an image of Jesus. Jesus is sacrificial lamb. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, here is the lamb who is giving his life for the uh, sins of the world. Families brought the animal. Uh, uh, that animal was four days with them, and, and, the, and, the, and the priest said, now all the sins of your family is going to the life of the animal. And they, they were killing that animal, uh, and animal paid the pro uh, with life the price for the sins of the family. That was a wonderful picture about Jesus. And Jesus, and like in Hebrew, say Jesus once, once, once in the time, only one time, he entered with his sacrifice in a holy place and opened us directly access to God. When Jesus died on the cross, do you remember when, when, what happened with this curtain? This curtain was very special because that was the holy place, holy of the holiest, and only high priest once a year could enter in the presence of God. When Jesus died, that was atonement sacrifice for our sins that we can enter in the presence of God. And that curtain was divided that everybody can have this privilege. Through Jesus Christ, this distinguish between priest and the people has been abolished. This privilege is for all believers, because all believers and the whole church is priesthood. Through Christ, all only, we can enjoy access to God and we can offer spiritual sacrifices for our worship. Priesthood of all believers. We are called as a holy priest to worship God. And I think this is very important to understand. Sometimes... People don't want to go to pray to God directly. They say, oh, this is not my job, this is for the priest. No, no. What Peter said, everybody has access to worship God. Everybody has access directly to God. Everybody has the way how we are worshiping God. And worshiping God through the songs, through prayers, through our life, through our good works. We are, we are, we are coming into the presence of God and worshiping Him. You and me are priests. <laughs> and Martin Luther, when the Reformation was... Uh, yeah, 500 years, uh, he emphasized that priesthood of all believers. Everybody has personal responsibility to be close to God. Because one day God will ask you directly, not what your priest or other people did for you. You, how did you respond to, to me? If the personal growth is important, is a fellowship as a stones is important, and a worship as a priest is only is important. This is not all activities that Peter want to encourage the readers to do that. What about the lost and lonely world outside? Don't we care about it? And this is the three other images which are connected to <coughs> our influence into the world. God wants to use church to influence the world, to be Christ representative into this world. Fourth image is God's people. 
in, in, in verse 9 and 10, he said, but you are chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, God's special possession, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are people of God. Once you had not received the mercy, but now you have received the mercy. In Exodus, in 19, 5 and 6, God was choosing people of Israel to be a blessing for the other nations and the other people around themselves. And he told them, you are my light, you are the light for the other nations. And today the church is the light for other nations. And we are called as a God people, because we belong to God, to declare, to declare the praises of Him. Uh, we as a church, as individuals, we are called to share the gospel with other people. That's what is the point here. We are called to be witnesses of God. We belong to Him. We are paid by the precious blood of Jesus, what Peter mentioned in the, in the first chapter. This is a call for evangelism. Sometimes Christian life can be only focused on ourselves. And then we can say, I want to, you know, be a living stone. I want to grow spiritual. I want to praise God in my home, in everything. But we have a, a responsibility and duty toward this world. Other people need to hear the, the most important truth which is the gospel. And they will see that in your life, you can speak and you can share with other people why you believe in Jesus, why this is important, why we are so joyful in the hard situations, because God changed our lives. Amen? Think about how you can influence other people in your midst. Your Jerusalem is your work, family, neighborhood. Uh, everywhere where you go, you are bringing that good news. The fifth uh, illustration is that he is reminding them that they're foreigners. In verse 11 and 12, he said, this, Dear friends, I urge you as a foreigners and exiles to abstain, ab abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such a good life among the pagans. When they accuse you of doing wrong, they might see the good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Although they are foreigners, and although they are not belong to that system spiritually, uh, 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 Peter is calling them to live a holy life. And we talked that last two Sundays ago, and uh, Jake also mentioned that last Sunday. They were citizens of two countries. They were primary citizens of heaven, but also they're calling to live a holy life today as a citizens of where they are living and where they are. In Philippians 3.20, Apostle Paul, he said, you are citizens of heaven. Because Philipp, people from Philippi were boasting about their citizenship. They were special colony, but said, okay, you have a good passport, but your citizenship is in heaven. And you should not forget that. And I think that we as a Christian people, we need to live a holy life. Today there is a lot of attacks, maybe with the reason the Christian people are corrupt. Oh, this priest did that, or this pastor did that, or this speaker did that. A lot of, some scandals, etc. But we need to live the life which is reflecting our message. Amen? And sometimes it's very hard to live a Christian life in a, in a in society where the old systems and values are, are, are completely different. And sometimes we should we are behaving like this lizard chameleon, <laughs> you know, changing the color how the uh, surrounding are colorful, you know. And we should be different. And 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 my prayer for you and for me is that to live all their Christian life, people can call us differently, people can laugh to us, but we want to live and we want to follow Jesus as a Christians. Amen? Amen. And I think this is very very important for us. And he's challenging them. He didn't tell them, okay, you suffer a lot, uh, go home. No, he said, now it's the time you, you should live your life more holy. The truth of heavenly citizenship is sometimes misused as an excuse for avoiding our earthly responsibility to live a holy life. A lot of people say, oh, I belong to God in heaven, and how do you live? Oh, this is not important because I will go in heaven. <laughs> this is very important. We must live a holy life in preparation for the holy presence of God in heaven, yes? What is hindering us for this kind of life? Is there any sin? Is there any compromise? Is there anything that you need to confess this morning to God? Say, God, remove this problem. I want to live most committed life. 
committed life. And the sixth image is the servant. He's mentioning, and then Jake mentioned that very nicely. I was listening on a, on, a, on a, I was not here, I was in Greece, but how we as a servant, uh, he, he's mentioning that we are servants and that we are citizens. We belong to different countries and we are servants and citizens and we need to behave as servants and as citizens. 13 to 17, he said, Submit yourself to the Lord's sake for any human authority, whatever to the emperor as supreme authority or to the governors who are sent by him to punish those who are doing wrong to those who are doing right. For it is a God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of the foolish people. Live as a free people, but not use your freedom to cover up the evil. Live as God's servants. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Uh, nevertheless, in spite of our early duties, as we need to be responsible citizens, we want to submit to the authorities, praying for them, doing good and respect everyone. And we said the only way that if the authorities are forbidding, are giving some laws which is against our faith and belief, we are rather listen God than authorities. And first Christians suffer a lot because of that. And we need to be careful about that as well. Sometimes we are criticizing politicians. In, I know in Serbia we are criticizing politicians and ever, but we don't pray for them. In Slovakia they did a very interesting thing. Uh, every church in Slovakia made agreement to pray each church for one member of parliament. They call the action, adopt your member of parliament. <laughs> and then the church, because they have a system that the, the people are uh, members of parliament are elected by, the, by their area, not by the party. And every church pray for the member of parliament who, who are in their area. They wrote the letters of support. And a lot of good things happened there. These members of parliament who are making decisions, they saw a lot of letters that people are praying for them, and they were careful how they're living in uh, life and how they're making decisions. And I think as a servants, we as a Christians are, needs to be on the front, front line of serving our community. Is this a human traffic? We want to help there. Is this a, some ecological issues? We need to serve there. Is there is a food bank or homeless people? We want to be there. And through the church history, the founders of the Red Cross and other people were serving because they were Christians, they wanted to serve their community. We are still belong first to heaven. We are aliens and exiles on the earth, but we are pilgrims traveling home to God, but we want to be good citizens of our countries and our communities. This is the six metaphors that Peter gives to the, to the writers in the first century. It needs to be a balance. It needs to be a balance. As a newborn babies, we are called to grow. You and me, needs for, we need to pray that we can spiritually grow. That is also, discipline is very important there. To, to, to feed yourself with a good food, spiritual food. As the living stones, we are called for fellowship. Don't be isolated Christian. Come to Sunday morning church uh, service. But during the week, there is a lot of Bible studies. There is a lot of activities. Be involved in local church. This is not just your private thing. You come as a theater and go home. You need to be involved. You need to carry other uh, uh, stones, and you need to be cared for as well, because each of us we are going through different times of life. We are holy priests who are called for worship. Enjoy your free access to God. Amen. Amen. Sing to Him. Like I like sometimes to put a seed in a car and to worship. One time I was touched by one song and I was crying on the red light, <laughs> and then you know like singing, and the people thought I got a heart attack. And one guy came and said, hey, "Is everything okay? Should I call emergency?" I said, "No, no, no, I'm just singing to God." And he was like, <laughs> in, in, "You are to your priest. Enjoy, so worship God, give Him the best. As a God's own people, you call for witness, share the good news to other people. Don't keep it only for yourself." As uh, aliens and strangers, you call for holiness. You need to live and ask with God's help, holy life. If something is bad, malice, bad word, bad words, uh, other things, this is big problem for a spiritual attitude. Say, God, I want to get rid of that. And as the servants of God, we are called for citizenship. These six duties can be divided in three groups. We invited for individual discipleship and court 
corporate fellowship. We are called, we are called both. Babies are born into the family and they have own identity. Even twins are born one by one. <laughs> Primary function of the stones is to be a part of the building and they are surrounded their individuality to the building. We need to emphasize our individual and our corporate responsibility. We are called also for worship and work. As a priesthood, we are called to worship God. But as a church, we are worshiping, witnessing community. We are working, we are serving our community, we are sharing the gospel. And also we are called for pilgrimage and citizenship. We should never forget that we are here for some time. And that our real citizenship is in heaven. In each of these groups, we are called to balance, not to emphasize either at the expenses of others. We are called, we are both individual disciples and church members. We are worshippers and witnesses. We are pilgrims and citizens. May God bless us to remind ourselves who we are, what is our identity in the times of crisis, to pray for the strength and the right decisions that will affect our priorities and lifestyles as disciples of Christ. May God bless us all. Amen. Amen. This is very important and I think uh, 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 maybe there was too many, six these metaphors, but each of us can find one metaphor that we are maybe weak and we can pray and ask God for help that God will strengthen us. I will invite, invite a, a worship uh, a team, uh, or we will do First Lord's Supper. Yes, we can do First Lord's Supper. Um, every Sunday, uh, first Sunday of the week, we have communion, Lord's Supper, or in Serbia we say preachers, where we are taking bread and wine as remembrance, as a symbol of Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross. And his body was killed. And bread is a symbol of Jesus' body. The price that he was paid uh, for us. And uh, this wine, a cup of wine, is, is a symbol of Jesus' blood. It's a new covenant that God did with all people. He paid the price for our sins. And, and the blood is a symbol of life. And while we are taking this uh, bread and wine, we are having three... Views. One of you in the past, we are thanking God. Say, God, thank you very much for changing my life. Thank you that you paid the, pay the price. Thank you that you paid with the precious blood of Jesus my sins and give me a new life. It's all about you. We have a view in presence. God, please change me. <laughs> Forgive my sin. Forgive what is problem in my heart. And there is a third view, a view of hope, where we are... Well, we are taking bread and wine, we say, Lord, we are waiting for you to come back. That we will spend eternity with you. And this communion, when we are taking bread and wine, God is present in a special way. And God wants to speak to our hearts. And I would like uh, uh, to be a little bit in a silence. And that you can be thankful to God. And that uh, you can uh, also confess uh, maybe some sin or something which is in your heart now it's a time you can tell to God and ask for forgiveness and also you can uh, uh, ask God for the future direction be, uh, be a little bit in silence and then I will pray and I will ask uh, uh, Brother Jake to, to help me uh, with, the, with the communion here in front after the prayer be in the silence, God is present here <coughs> and, and uh, speak to him and he will speak to you Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we can be together. Thank you that you have born us into new family. Help us so that we can uh, grow and that we can worship, that we can live 
as your children holy life. God, uh, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he is this cornerstone that we need to come to him through faith alone. Thank you the good news the gospel is a is your gift to us. And forgive us when we instead of coming close to the Jesus that we are focusing on other people and uh, another direction uh, we want you to be the lord of our life. Thank you for 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 your body and thank you for your blood. Thank you for your life. Thank you that you died on the cross for our sins and give us eternal life. Lord, help us here in Serbia, to all of us who are here, that we can know you personally, and that we can experience you, and that we can understand who you are, and what you are offering to us. We are praying, Lord, that you will bless us and be with us, with our families, with everything what we are doing, and especially with next week, that we can be responsible, your people, who will declare the praises and glory of you in everything what we are doing. We are praying this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I'd like to ask if you could stand up. We, we, we will do a little bit liturgy now.